Haynes Frybot, this is my cheat sheet for Friday, September 7th. The Federal Reserve, if you want to beat the Fed, and a lot of people do, I mean, I'm not talking about like with a baseball bat, violence isn't the answer, but if you want to beat the Fed at their own game, well, heck, all you have to do is actually buy a home or refi yours right now. Hey, get this, Ben Bernanke, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, we uh, just found out in public disclosures that he actually refied his home last year at four and a quarter percent. You can do better than that right now, either buying or refining a home. So that's one way you can beat the Fed. Here's the other thing, and I don't mean to cast any kind of a negative thought out there regarding our Federal Reserve, but does it make you a little bit nervous at all that Ben Bernanke refinanced last year, theoretically thinking that mortgage rates weren't going to go even lower? Because if so, why wouldn't he wait just a little bit longer? In other words, could it be that he's not entirely certain of what he's doing and doesn't have quite as much control over the situation as he seems to put out there. I'm just saying. Hey, anyway, um, regardless of what our Fed's up to or what Ben Bernanke has control of, um, we have no control over what the Eurozone is doing. And yesterday they said, damn the torpedoes, let's print more money. Which, by the way, we've done that before. QE1, QE2. And I actually think that the Federal Reserve is probably doing something behind closed doors, printing more money in QE3 right now. Um, you, so why the stock market? You, it's weird. Stock market usually is driven just by earnings, by earnings. And we had a declining year-over-year -year quarter of earnings last time around. And we're anticipated that earnings year-over-year -year are going to drop in the quarter we're in, third quarter, when we get those results. So how is it that the stock market is back above 13,000, back near four-year highs? Well, it gets down to the money printing, the damn th the torpedoes. See, as more money is just thrown out there and created, your dollar or your euro becomes worth less. And yesterday, the Eurozone said that they are going to engage in a bond buying program, read printing more money, with no limit on it. I mean, they can just keep going for as long as they feel like it, just pumping more money out there. So that means that assets need to inflate along with the currency. Now, if you're in a treasury, you get crushed there because you don't even get, it doesn't even keep up with inflation. But the stock market, see, the stock market, when it went from even 10,000 to 13,000 on the Dow during the period of QE1 and the end of QE2, well, that meant that you at least didn't lose any money because 13% more money was put out there. In other words, historically, when you have more money being printed, stocks tend to perform the best of any asset class out there, except for the gold situation. You've also seen gold moving higher above $1,700 an ounce. That's why... The stock market continues to move higher, even as people are more and more nervous about what's going on in the economy and the stock market being at its current levels. Where else are you going to park your money? You'll get crushed almost everywhere else. Um, okay, is Mitt Romney now the favorite? Could be. I do a couple different pieces of uh, data, and now that Romney is uh, in, into the past the convention mode. Uh, I'm doing head-to-head -head comparisons weekly with President Obama. More on that in a second. First, the president. His approval ratings as we check in at just under 48%. I round up to 48. That still gives him a 62% chance of winning re-election historically. Now, to put this in context with George W. Bush and his one in 2004, the news isn't as good for President Obama. George W. Bush on this date in 2004 had a 52% approval rating more than four points higher than where President Obama is right now, uh, for comparison's sake. But here's the bigger piece of information. The head-to-head -head with Mitt Romney. Three weeks ago, we had 9% of voters in, in the average of all head-to-head -head polling uh, undecided between Mitt Romney and President Obama, 9%. And at that point, President Obama was up one point on Mitt Romney. Today, we only have 6% undecided voters in the aggregate of the head-to-head -head polling, and it's a dead heat. They're literally tied at 46.7 apiece. Here's where it's problematic for President Obama. We know who the incumbent president is. Historically, the challenging president, or the, the challenger to the president, wins 75% of undecideds. If that holds, with them literally being tied to the tenth of a point right now, that projects to be about a 52 to 48 win for Mitt Romney. In other words, using the aggregate head-to-head -head data right now, it looks like Mitt Romney would be the favorite, at least in a popular vote. We know that popular votes don't equal electoral college victories. Uh, but a little food for thought there. And we're going to have to wait and see if there's any post-convention bounce 
for President Obama. I've got the complete rundown on the Kindle Fires, all three of them, along with Super Bowl ads and more. It's on the physical cheat sheet. Check it out. That's the cheat sheet for today. Enjoy yours. We'll see you Monday.